Welcome to the Heart-Led Business Show, where compassion meets commerce and leaders lead with love. Join your host, Tom Jacobs, as he delves into the insightful conversations with visionary business leaders who defy the status quo, putting humanity first and profit second. From heartfelt strategies to inspiring stories, this podcast is your compass in the world of conscious capitalism. So buckle up and let your heart guide your business journey. All right, good golly, folks. Fasten your fiscal seatbelts because we're about to ride the roller coaster of riveting financial revelations. Welcoming our wizard of wealth, the maestro of money matters, the sultan of savings, Mr. Andy Rogers. He's the mainspring in your financial timepiece, blending brutal honesty with buoyant optimism. From goal setting to goal getting, he's here to share his dazzling disciplined approach to dollars. So folks, prepare for the peeps into Pandora's box of prosperous possibilities. Andy, welcome to the show. So glad you're here. Tom, thanks for having me. That was a sweet intro. I appreciate the pros. <laughs> I always like to ask first off, like, what's your definition of a heart-led business? Well, Tom, I be in financial services a lot of times. Money is very emotional for people. And how I got into this industry when I was in my early 20s, I started into this industry and my grandfather started to have issues with his health. And so he was a mentor to me. I always looked up to him. He was a savvy real estate investor, had multiple properties, multiple buildings, a lot of rental real estate. And then he had his first heart attack at age 55. And so at that point, my family was kind of scrambling to figure out how do we manage all these things that my grand, pretty much only my grandfather knew how to do. And um, my grandfather's doctor became his financial advisor. And as he had another heart attack and then another stroke and things became more and more difficult for him, my family uh, didn't really know what to do. So they started selling um, those properties. And looking back on that, um, I didn't know it was happening. I was just a young person, but anyways, he ended up with one property in his name that he was actually living in. And, and when I went to him and said, grandpa, what's the plan here? He said, well, I, I didn't really have a plan. Andy, if that was the plan. <laughs> and so I realized it wasn't just him, but it was, um, everywhere I looked folks like my grandfather who came from the depression era, um, they play their cards close to their vest. They didn't talk about things. They were always looking over their shoulders, scared to share their financial situation because they were scared it was going to be taken all away from them at any moment in time. And those people are everywhere. And I realized, hey, this is there's a huge opportunity to help folks like my grandfather going forward. So that's how I started down this road. Cool. Like, And what's interesting is not a lot of people would think that financial advising, financial matters in, in general, like that would be a heart led business because a lot of people have this connection with money and especially a lot of entrepreneurs that I work with and have spoken with money is the, like their biggest obstacle asking for money. And, and then having you on the show and talking about the your money is very emotional. I'd love for you to kind of dive a little deeper into that and where the heart comes in terms of helping people with their finances. Yeah. I mean, just expanding on that story a little bit, my, my family, we grew up a little bit with religion and there was good and evil. And a lot of times the money side of things was looked at a little bit as negative. It was like an almost too much money was kind of an evil thing. And so as I started growing up, I realized, well, I have to unlearn a bunch of stuff that I learned growing up because money doesn't care one way or another, right? If you don't have it, it, it doesn't care. And if you have it, it doesn't care. And so it's not necessarily money that is the root of all evil. It's what you, what you do with it and, and how you, how you act around it and how you let it affect you. So I've got a lot of clients that are very charitably inclined. They've got massive amounts of wealth and they're able to affect their community and where they came from and, and possibly affect generations to come with the, the wealth that they've created. So when it comes to leading with heart, some of the most exciting parts about my job is when I get to see people actually take funds that they've 
saved and donate them to charities. Mm -hmm. And um, there's tax advantages to doing that as well. So you can start to really create some interesting concepts around money that is actually uh, not evil like I learned when I was growing up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that the last guest on the show was talking about that as well. And that creates this image like if money is evil, if I get money, then I become evil, right? And so you, you associate yourself. How do you help people kind of overcome that? Because it sounds like you're almost helping people with the psychology around money and helping them to see it as a good thing or something as part of their being. Yeah, I mean, managing investments is how we get paid, but really what I, I spend most of my time doing psychology and trying to help people with behavioral issues. Mm -hmm. So whether that's biases that they have around money, they're not factual, but emotional. So just helping people work through that as well as really kind of uncovering what people's goals are. I think a lot of people don't have really any understanding that being rich is not really a goal. <laughs> so I try and get people to come up with timelines. We use different things like smart goals where they're very specific, they're measurable, they're attainable, they're relevant to your situation. And then there's time components to that, as well as being able to dream, like having these big dreams that are kind of people will, will naysay on those dreams. So a lot of times if you have a big dream and it's too big and you tell people about it, a lot of times you'll get people saying, oh, you'll never be able to achieve that, right? That's impossible. Or, and so those sorts of things have always driven me personally as an entrepreneur, just people telling me what I can't do has kind of driven me to do them, do those things. Yeah. <laughs> and in this industry, at one point in time, I became fully disabled and I had to leave the industry. So I had early onset arthritis. And so medications became available that actually helped me kind of pull out of that situation. But looking at my grandfather's situation and knowing that health was a major factor in his financial demise pretty much versus a lot of times money doesn't mean anything if you don't have your health. So trying to integrate those two things as well is I call it wealth and wellness. Mm -hmm. So having a holistic, abundant mindset as well as taking care of your body, because a lot of times as entrepreneurs, I see people working 80 hour weeks until they're 70 years old because they keep telling themselves, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to hit this thing and then I'm going to be okay. And then all of a sudden they end up sick and none of it means anything anyways. Right. So just helping people get through that and actually see that's happening to them and being able to call them out on yeah. their stuff, just giving people, giving me permission to uh, a lot of times just call them on their BS and it, it is why people come mm -hmm. to me. It's kind of a, a no BS approach to wealth and wellness is because I've had all these experiences. I can relay those things back to folks as to why it's important that they need to think. Well, about. it sounds like a, a big part of that is a coaching experience for them. And I, I think that's leading with the heart because now you have to give them the hard truth or tough love sometimes to get them to do what they really need to do that they don't realize to do. That's important for myself and just people that I align with also. So this isn't for everybody. Some people, when they come to me, they just want that financial person. That's kind of a, a money robot and they don't want any emotion. They don't want to hear those sorts of things. And so that's really not a good fit for me and my practice. So I get along more with uh, folks that come from a place where I've come from, which was basically nothing. And then kind of come to this place where now they've got funds and they want to they want to use those for positive things to affect, like I said, their community and the people around them. So I tend to really mesh better with those folks than I do with people that just want to hire a money robot. Yeah, so. totally. And speaking of that too, like, have you seen a difference in terms of either client results, compliance, what have you? Like, having that heart centered approach and that kind of tough love coach approach that you have versus a money manager that is that robotic, but is just focused on making the trades and trying to maximize the money piece. Like, have you seen a difference in, and what does that difference look like? A lot of times we'll not work with people. So I, I do 
turn people away. And if it don't feel it's a good fit personality wise, especially in some of these recent years, we've got an election coming up. And so there's certain things that are very divisive right now, which is happening within my own family. So people that I'm related to have disconnected from other people within the family because of political issues that arise. And so when I'm managing money and people want to, they want to plug their politics into their investments. And I really, I discourage that and have lost clients over the years where they, there's some folks that are very conspiracy oriented. They believe that the world is spiraling out of control and there's just no way to stop that. And so I have a glimmer of hope typically in my, I'm kind of a glass half full type of person where I do, yes, there are difficult things always going to happen in the economy. Every year, the headlines are going to be very similar to times in the past, but we've always, as the human condition, as humans, we've made it through those things and came out the other side in a better place, right? And some people don't want to hear that. They want to wallow in that negative stuff. I've, I don't get paid as much as the financial robot person mm -hmm. because they are unbiased to any of that, mm -hmm. right? So they'll do... They'll manage your money regardless of your personality and they will just agree with your politics and do whatever you want to, to get paid. <laughs> and it, it doesn't sound like a, a way of running a business either. Like, do you see a, like a difference between somebody like that and, and they're running their own business their way, like the level of happiness or the level of contentment that they have versus you who's really leading with your heart and other advisors like yourself, like. Do you see a difference in like the quality of life outside of money? Sure. I mean, they, they say that if you are passionate about what you're doing, you'll never work a day in your life type of situation. And so, yes, some people enter this industry, um, and I, I don't tend to want to down, talk down on any sort of person in this industry, but after I became disabled and I came back into this industry, a lot of things had changed from what was happening before. And, and there was a lot of insurance companies and things like that involved. And I actually got hired onto an insurance company and it was very sales salesy. There was several products that I had access to, and I was to sell those products regardless of the fit for that person's situation. And so I've been through that training. I've got a mean insurance presentation and I can sell stuff and make it sound really good. And so as that sort of salesperson, a lot of times they're fly by night. They're not around for the decades like I have been. So I kind of have built my practice for the long term and the relationships that I create are lifetime relationships. And many times I work with some of my relationships are four generations deep mm -hmm. where working with the grandparents and the kids as kids and the kids as kids after that. And then parents pass away and there's legacy planning involved in what I do versus product sales and transactional business. So I guess that's the difference, right? Is being a product pusher versus a, a relationship based yeah. business. That's the difference. Yeah. Or you're creating solutions for people versus just selling something to them. Yeah. Many times we're uncovering things that people never even thought about when it comes to charitable giving and passing money on to the next generation. There's a lot that goes into that and having those conversations or helping facilitate those conversations between family members. A lot of times it's difficult to talk to your kids about money because one, you're scared to uncut, to tell them everything that you have. Right. So going back to my grandfather's, <laughs> he held it very close and nobody even knew what he had going on. And then this, then until there was an emergency and then all of a sudden, uh, they had to know and they didn't want to know. And when they realized that he had so much, his situation was relatively complex. None of them knew how to deal with it because there's not a lot of education around money. Yeah. So they, they don't teach this stuff in K through 12. They don't, there's very rarely are there even college classes on advanced financial planning techniques. So that's kind of where I, I wrote a book and I, I'm trying to put stuff out there for folks. If I can't work with folks because they don't quite, um, are a good fit for me. At least I have resources that I can hand to them to say, Hey, check this out. Look at these things, do this stuff. And then maybe come back to me down the road and we can talk yeah. more.
that longevity, the relationship, that's the theme that I've been hearing around heart-centered business owners. And that's, it's good to see that in many different industries, especially in the financial industry where a lot, I think a lot of people have that connotation of just sell you what you want or sell you what they want to sell you versus what you actually need. And it's so refreshing to, to hear that from you. What surprises have you found being more of that holistic financial advisor and helping people from the heart? What surprises have come up for you? It leaves you open for having your heart out there and your emotions and caring for people. It leaves you open for you're vulnerable for people that are litigious. Mm -hmm. A lot of times there's people that are, they're looking for, they're looking for a big paycheck and they want, and they're willing to blame other people around them for what's happening in their financial world. And so that's happened to me before where people start making bad decisions and all of a sudden it becomes my fault that they're making those decisions, right? It's because I'm their, I'm the trust advisor. And then all of a sudden something goes sideways in their world. And all of a sudden it, it kind of lands on me. So that, that, and that's going to be true in any business, right? So if you create these relationships and you're not just in a transactional situation, then breakups are hard <laughs> because you're, you basically were in a pretty serious relationship. And I know things about most people and that are clients of mine that probably nobody else knows. And uh, to be trusted with that information, they're vulnerable, I'm vulnerable, and you have to be okay with that. Had my heart broken and try and move forward and continue to try and not turn into the money robot because that's the default, right? You want to just, you want to run and go, I could just cover my heart back up and try and just run a business and, and not get so involved in people's lives, but something I've got a little bit of a glutton for punishment <laughs> in that aspect. Let's see, you have a big heart and that's what's leading your business, which is, you know, so refreshing to hear. Yeah. And, and the other thing, Tom, is I'm, I'm also an artist. Okay. So many people in this industry, they don't, they're not musicians. They don't paint. They don't mm -hmm. like gardening. Like I have these things that I do. I've been in, I've been in bands. I've played music my, most of my life. So my last project, I was in a heavy metal band. <laughs> <laughs> and so when clients come out to see me, they're like, who is this person? Like they don't even know they're, they kind of, they can't connect the two things. And then also just, I've been getting into things like bonsai recently where I'm, I'm like working with small trees awesome. and it's very therapeutic. So I totally tune out and I'm involved in these art projects and music and things like that. And most financial advisors have, uh, I've done the survey and it's maybe <laughs> five in a hundred <laughs> that can play guitar and sing and write songs for people just for fun. Yeah, that's fascinating. Just very right brain, left brain, just getting them both. So you're the full brain when, when it comes to it. <laughs> I don't know about that, Tom. <laughs> we'll ask some of my partners and they know that I got it on, I've got my heart on my sleeve mm. and yes, in business meetings and things like that, where I've got partners that are very, very business only and no no art. And so they know that about me. And so a lot of times they just kind of shake their head and go, yes, that's Andy. Yes. That's what you're going to get. I love it. That's great. Yeah. Uh, fascinating. Heavy metal. That, that, yeah. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have pegged that. They call it doom metal. Oh, wow. So we're, I've been doing it for so long that we're old and slow. So it's just very heavy and melodic. Okay. The last project I played the bass. Oh, yeah. And so spent a lot of time just playing one note. It was very low. <laughs> Fascinating. Cool. Well, again, thank you so, so much for sharing those stories. Very inspirational for a, a lot of people that are concerned about kind of going into business and leading with the heart, not being transactional, but just being true to themselves. And it sounds like you have actually accomplished that. So great. And Thanks for sharing those stories. If people are interested in learning more about you and what you can do for them, how can they get a hold of you? The company that I work for is called Mainspring Wealth Advisors. So we've got a website that you can go check out and learn more about the company. Personally, like I said, I, I wrote a book. You can go to Amazon and find my book, which is called Wealth Hacking Secrets. And it's available on Amazon. And then also if you wanted to schedule time to meet, 
You can go to andyscalendar.com and schedule a time and we can get together on a call and learn more about your situation and see if we might be able to help. All right, cool. We'll link all that into the show notes as well. We'll put some links to the, the book and calendar.com as well. So they'll make it easy for them to get to see you. And again, thank you so much yeah. for being on the show today. And I wish you all the best in, in the future. Well, I also want to say, Tom, thank you for, and you and your team for doing the things that you do for me. I, we recently started working together. And so anybody out there that's looking to grow their business and is doing so through online methods and things like that, definitely hook up with Tom and, and see what he can do for you. Cause it's been kind of a game changer for, for me and my practice. So I appreciate Thank you so that. much for saying that. I didn't expect that. Really appreciate that. Cool. Just a reminder to all the listeners out there, if you could give us a rating and a review so that other people can learn more about the Heart Led Business Show and get all the wisdom from industry leaders on how they are leading with heart and putting conscious over capitalism and helping tons of people along the way. You've been listening to the Heart Led Business Show, hosted by Tom Jacobs. Join us next time for another inspiring journey into the heart of business.